So welcome everybody to the June 23rd, 2020 Analytics Weekly. Uh, we have a couple of uh, FYIs on the board. One of them is about uh, uh, a pulse survey that we're doing, which I think most of you have probably seen. If you haven't, please check your email. So first, uh, first thing here is the walkthrough of the board. So share my screen here. Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry. I forgot to apply the milestone. So we have now kicked off 13.2. And here's what our board is looking like. Uh, so actually, this one is a great one to get an update on. Um, if uh, uh, Adam, if you want to let us know what's going on with that, just because we, I believe, already got a, a little bit of a head start on it in thirteen one. Um, yeah, so the backend part has been merged. There was a bug about filtering multiple labels at the same time, and that's currently at the maintainer review. I had to ping Ash again because I guess he was on holiday, or I don't know, but should be merged. About the front end, I'm, I'm not sure. As far as I know, it's behind a feature flag, so we can enable it as soon as the, the fix for the label bottoms are landing and try it for github.com, github.org. Yeah, on the front end, I believe Isikil is wrapping up one or two pending MRs. I think Brandon's already re reviewing one. Um, so I'm expecting them to the review to be finalized in the next one or two days. But Brandon, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Guess Brandon's not not fully here yet. Or you're just not wrong. Cool. Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, that sounds great, actually. That'll be nice to get that knocked out early in 13.2 here. Um, cool. So um, moving over here to this issues chart with the single series, and I think we have some implementation issues here. That one is just the, um, to the, uh, the MR chart is really the first one. And I have not in 13.2 put all the P labels on the issues yet. So that's why it's not showing up in the column. I'll go back and fix that today. I actually did fix that for the 13.3 um, plan, but uh, I, I, need to, I need to fix it for the 13.2 one. Okay. So I just pulled it up. Which priority label would you like on it? P2. I, I probably won't be using P, you know, one until we start getting things that are like super hot, right? And uh, so all, most things will be super, or will be P2, three, and four. Cool, okay. Um, and uh, Brandon, I don't know if you do wanna uh, give us an update on this one. It, you know, we're at the beginning of the milestone and I know this is a big issue, but if you do have anything, uh, I'm sure we'd love to hear it. Actually, Sorry, I just got on the call been having a bit of uh, audio problems. Um, MR chart single series. So I've been working about on the controller and root uh, just to start on the skeleton application and then go and look at adding the uh, chart over there. Um, watch if there's anything really important to update. Um, I mean, we're going to need a back end API in order to retrieve data. Um, on the front end, yeah, we're just going to be adding the single chart, single cherry uh, series. Cool. And you feel like execution is going pretty smooth so far? Um, so far, it's been quite interesting. I've been uh, playing around in Ruby, uh, getting the controller working uh, with some help from Adam. So that's been 
pretty good, um, but execution should be fine. Uh, I'd have a much better update next week. Cool, awesome. Should we just uh, update the uh, workflow label so that one's probably either uh, ready for development or already in development? Good. Yeah, so I haven't started the development on that one specifically yet, um, but uh, that could probably be changed to ready for development. Done. Cool. Okay. And because the issues chart work is kind of based on the work we're doing for MR's chart, uh, I think that's why it's not assigned here. Uh, anybody please correct me if I'm wrong on that. You're right. Cool. Uh, and then we have uh, embeddable charts, which uh, Michael, it looks like that one's yours. Um, same thing. I don't know if you have an update just because it's so early in 13.2 here, but uh, if you do have an update, I'm sure we'd love to hear. Yeah, sure. I've, uh, I've started looking into it um, and I am currently, so there's been a large discussion on the issue. Um, so if you're interested, you can dive into that. Um, I'm currently extending a breakdown that uh, Martin put together uh, that highlighted uh, the general workflow of it um, and going into a little bit more detail and I'm going to be creating tickets for this. I just haven't gone about it yet because I, I kind of want to get the full picture before uh, creating them, but I expect to have them done before to, I leave today. Uh, so that should give you hopefully some more detail. I might also uh, add a few more questions, uh, clarifying questions on there uh, that might add to the discussion um, before I start developing on it. Cool, okay. So do you feel like the workflow design uh, label is accurate right now? Yeah, I, I feel like that's accurate. Uh, I will change it to uh, ready for development as soon as we can agree on the, the breakdown. But I think up until now, we, we are uh, in agreement. Uh, I just have a few more outstanding questions that I'm looking for answers to uh, just to make sure that we're on the same page. Cool, sounds good. Um, Michael, just uh, are, are any of those for me? Or are they primarily technical concerns at this point? Primarily technical concerns at this point. I, I think I got what I needed from you. Thank you for being responsive, both you and, and Martin. Um, uh, I might have some questions for you, Adam, uh, if you are available, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll just post in, in that issue or uh, uh, sub issues uh, when they come up. Yeah, feel free to bring me. So Michael, it kind of looks like you're up again here because the next thing is in the P4 column, this optimized page loading, which I, I see is blocked here. Um, yep. Do we need to get the blocker onto the board uh, just to get that knocked out so you can take care of this one? I um, I don't know why it doesn't show up. I probably am missing uh, to add a label onto it. Um, perhaps I thought I had ad added the right labels to it. Um, I already implemented and there's an outstanding MR uh, for uh, that sub ticks that's blocking it. Um, it's something that's going to require a little bit of review because it's a general chart, chart loader. It's not really like a huge thing. The functionality is in there, but we want to, before we close this issue, we want to make sure that the, the design is followed completely. And this sub tickets is kind of blocking that, that, that general chart loader is blocking that. So until that's merged, I, I cannot put up the MR to actually use that. Uh, that chart loader, but I already have the implementation of using that chart loader and it's a really small MR. So I expect that to go pretty quickly as soon as the, the blocking ticket uh, MR is merged. Awesome. Sounds like you're well on the way then. Yeah, I think so. Um, but correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong about the, the labeling there. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why it doesn't show up here if I need to add something specific to it. Yeah, I think maybe uh, if if there's if that other MR was executed under a separate issue, that issue probably just doesn't have a priority label on it right now, which is I don't think that's a big deal. I mean, you're you've got it underway. Um, gotcha. 
John Mason, was there other, you, you were saying you hadn't necessarily applied priority labels to all the issues in 13.2. Was there more you wanted to cover that we're not seeing here? Um, the only other, one of the big ones has to do with um, the VSA, uh, creating new VSAs and switching them. Yeah, I think they, they don't have a priority label. They have, they should show up in the, uh, ready for development column, I believe. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it looks, it looks like we have them a couple of different places. So we've got Ezekiel on front end. Uh, and actually, Magda, have you, uh, have you already started this? Maybe it's already further along. Oh, Magda, I think you're on mute. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I looked at it. I didn't like start on development because I don't quite understand some things, but that will help me just after this meeting. So I can change it to in dev label. Cool. cool. That sounds good. And I'm, I'm sure Ezekiel on the front end is probably just getting rolling as well. And yeah, I'll be happy to, after the meeting, clean up the party labels. Cool. All right. Well, I think that wraps us up with walking the board. Uh, John Mason, I'll hand it over to you for next up. John Mason, I don't know if you're talking. We're, we can't hear you. Okay. There we go. Um, we've had uh, uh, some conversation about um, our issues having tons and tons of comments on them. And um, for it seems seeming to take a long time to kind of get through the, the grooming process and so on. And one uh, idea that I have to expedite that and also to help with uh, moving planning along is to adjust our approach to, to doing the estimation. So um, the first part of that idea is um, to, to make a specific plan about which items we're going to estimate on a weekly basis, just so that we make sure we we get through enough of them and we're not planning uh, sort of all at the last minute. Um, and then uh, have a really quick pass that says, hey, this is not ready for estimation. The proposal isn't clear. You know, John Mason, you've got work to do. Um, and then if, uh, you know, once we've got a clear proposal, focus the conversation initially on what do we need to know in order to, to know how big this is. Um, you know, from my perspective, an estimation isn't, it's not a commitment. It's just a best guess that helps us know whether things are gonna fit into our release or not. And the sooner we have an idea about that, the, um, the easier it is uh, for me uh, to begin communicating to others um, and, and to make plans about other stories and so on. And, and then, I think the, the conversation can then trans, transition to all those deep dive topics. Whereas today, kind of what I, what I see happening is that we'll, we'll pick up a thread of one topic and we'll go very deep on that topic. And eventually we come back for up for air and we discover something else. And then we go deep on that topic and so on. But if we just kept the conversation, the first part of the conversation just really focused on well, how big this? How big do we think this is? Best guess. Uh, we can have a really focused conversation 
Um, and, and then um, once we know what the estimate is, the, all the kind of technical implementation, uh, you know, we can figure out in a second pass. Um, so that's, that's uh, the gist of this proposal uh, here. And I have started a 13.3 planning issue that sort of reflects this approach, but I, I, I really am interested in your opinion as to, uh, as to what you think about this. So 13.3, I know we're just starting 13.2. It seems crazy to be thinking about 13.3, but actually, you know, according to the dates, uh, we're supposed to have final planning done July 9, which is really just a few weeks away. Um, so uh, what I've done is um, created a section in the 13.3 planning issue that lists all the issues here. They should all have uh, pretty succinct proposals at, you know, at this point. Um, uh, you know, for, for example, uh, this one about multiple series, simple problem, a few bullet points on the proposal, a picture, and so on. Um, so, uh, and then what we could do is just slot those issues, take a quick pass and say, okay, well, which ones do we want to try to get estimated this week? And then which ones the week after and so on. We can, the ones that we think, hey, this might take longer. There may be a lot of conversation. We can move them, uh, you know, further down, but things that we think would be pretty quick to figure out what the size is, we can put in a nearer week. And um, I've listed them for 13.3 here in priority order. And um, so what do you think? What do you think about the idea of trying to take sort of a first pass focus on splitting issues into smaller issues, you know, right sizing, and then uh, sort of planning which ones we're going to estimate. So John Mason, just to summarize this, uh, the idea is basically uh, you ask engineers to come into specific issues and give a rough estimate of the weight just based on the initial proposal uh, and then uh, you know, schedule it into a milestone apply the workflow scheduling label. And that's kind of what tells us, okay, this needs to finish refinement. You know, engineering needs to finish refinement, you know, apply the final uh, weight estimate, and then it moves into ready for development. That's, that's my understanding of that, right? That's right. Just focusing on sort of the big, the big questions that would have a big impact on the size uh, at, at first and, you know, questions for me. So my question is just for my own uh, edification. The um, the problem that we're trying to solve here is coming up with some process where we're continually doing estimation on a week to week basis instead of um, kind of this large sprint when we get into the our planning process for the next milestone every month. Is that in summary what we're trying to achieve here? Yeah, I, that's a big part of it for me. Um, you know, when we get towards the end of a release, uh, everybody's busy trying to finish up MRs for that release. It puts a lot of pressure uh, to have everything ready for kickoff and so on if we're, we're kind of scrambling last minute. But if we can plan on a rolling basis, and I think it'll take a lot of pressure off the, that sort of final weeks of planning. What I like about this approach is that it could help us in the long run with doing a better planning, especially if we take the uh, amount of weight into account that we managed to um, deliver in previous milestones. So if we would have like a couple of items already estimated with like a base or an, an initial number, 
um, then this could definitely help us um, in um, doing the next milestones uh, planning in terms of uh, when, when we take capacity into account and the number of or the, the, the sum of weight that we delivered in the previous milestones. Are there I any like questions? I, I mean, I like I like the idea too. Um, I'm not. Uh, my question would be for the engineering department, which would be, um, is this the? I, I don't. So I don't see individuals assigned here. So I, I guess that we would be just trusting either EMs or individuals to just kind of take a look at this list and then, um, kind of take that estimation work on. Um, also, this this list here that we see isn't attached to like the actual status of the issue. So if someone goes and estimates half of the lists, half the list, then someone else comes along and then takes a look and they're like, oh, someone's already estimated these things. So, you know, my only question, I, I, I again, I'd be interested in the engineering department's thoughts here, but you know, maybe we can just take do like a, a Kanban approach here. Where we have like a, a list, we do a label like. Use the, we used the estimation needed label for a while and then relied on individuals to refine and then pull those into either ready for development or um, you know, workflow breakdown if more information is kind of needed for product. So maybe, I'm not sure if we can start there, but the, maybe the problem that we're trying to solve is we want to create a workflow that gets us doing refinement all the time, as opposed to a big spike, which I think is definitely worth doing. So I think we probably would need to start using the estimation needed label again, uh, just because you know not all issues in scheduling are going to be needing final uh, refinement. So uh, there's that. I'm a little bit worried uh, that if we don't have something like that, um, there's going to be some risk of slippage here. Um, you know, just in terms of we start a milestone and then realize, oh, we need to finish refining this thing. And that eats up, you know, another five days, uh, which is basically, you know, the first week of the milestone and then things slip. So um, just for context here, for, for those who haven't been on the analytics team, uh, you know, for, for its full lifetime, you know, since starting last year, uh, we had kind of an issue, you know, we basically ran into this issue of things slipping because they weren't refined uh, uh, kind of in the beginning. So we shifted our process to invest more in refinement upfront to like have a more solid estimate upfront um, before we started execution, you know, before we even committed to anything in a milestone. So that's, that's why the process is the way it is right now. I definitely see how that can be uh, a little bit rigid sometimes. So, uh, it seems like maybe this is about, uh, you know, shifting back and having a little bit more of a middle ground. Um, you know, I, my thinking is it's an experiment. Let's try it out. Um, you know, I see how planning has been complicated by not having uh, estimates sort of early enough. So, you know, the, the rough estimate and then finish refinement and do a final estimate. Um, as long as we still try to finish the refinement before the milestone starts, I think that can work. Yeah, totally agree yeah. with you. I think we just need to make sure that we uh, incorporate it into our daily routine or into our weekly routine. So engineers are aware of, hey, we want to, um, like part of my, my weekly schedule is to um, give an estimate on the area that uh, that I'm uh, the owner of or that I'm working on. Uh, would I know what I'm like, uh, myself, I think I would prefer to know like which issues I would be to, uh, I should like refine, which I understand is like, ask the question if I don't understand and write the estimation, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So yeah, I would like to have like few of them that like I know that I'm responsible for because I think that then even if I ask other people questions, I know that this is like my job and to do it till a certain time. And I suggest that we, you know, we sort of take a pass through here 
and pick, you know, weeks and people for each of, of them. And so people sort of know which ones they're responsible for. And uh, we could do that on a week to week basis, or we could do it all up front. Um, but that, that I think would create a lot of clarity. And, and to the point about issue labels and, and, and keeping track of things, I did go through and I cleaned up all of the next up labels. So the next up labels ought to match what's here pretty closely with a very few exceptions. And I also assigned everything to estimated needed that doesn't have an estimate yet. And, and I created this analytics planning prep board um, that has, that filters next up and analytics and so on, um, which might, might help us as well. We, we don't have to use this board. We could do it some other way, but um, I, I haven't been using issue labels, uh, you know, very carefully. And I, I recognize that that could be a, a pain for other people. So I'm, I'm trying to be more um, clear about things in, in the issue labels. I haven't uh, been here for um, like what was there before. Um, <clears throat> I definitely like this approach. Uh, it seems to me to um, uh, to be <laughs> le lack of a better word leaning up against a, a lean uh, um, methodology. Um, and uh, I, I think that I've tried to do something like that before, and uh, I think that works really well. Um, yeah, there does seem to be like some concern, at least for me also on, uh, getting like having to monitor a page or something to, to go back and remind myself that I need to do estimates. Um, there's a bunch of different ways we could solve this, but I, I could see that as a bit, uh, pitfall, uh, perhaps like, a weekly noted, like a message, like we do with, the. Um, I can't remember the weekly reports, engineering reports. Uh, I'm, I can't remember the exact name of that, but, but do something similar to like a reminder, go, go and, and do some estimates. Uh, that could be an, an initial pass, but I could see it be a pitfall that, that we would forget otherwise. Something like a triage report. Or just my, be assigned my, randomly or something. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that we can go about this. I would yeah, want I to be just assigned to stuff and like kind of be it randomly. If I cannot do something because I don't have enough context and maybe I can pass it on or tr trade with somebody else. But I, I think for me personally, it would be easier to kind of um, have it in my list of issues that I have to work on and then I can remember better. Yeah, Magda, I think that's right. I think either self-assignment or EMs assigning people are probably more likely with our group, just a combination of both as it's convenient uh, to just make sure it's clear kind of who's responsible for what. I, I think just earlier issue assignment would be another feature you know, to, of this process change. Just taking a look at the agenda here to see how much more time we have for this conversation. Because um, I think it would be really cool if, uh, well, do do you do we want to take a crack at doing some initial sort of assignment of these things right now on the call, or do we want to do that um, after the call? I would suggest offline. Offline, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's do that. Just just a, a quick reminder about the dates. This is this is June twenty three, and we already have a number of items estimated. Uh, next week, uh, we have Tuesday, June thirtieth. We have uh, our our regular weekly meeting, and then pre planning is already on July second, which is just um, that same week on Thursday, and then final planning on on Thursday. So the planning comes up a lot faster. I, I'm always surprised by how fast it comes up. Um, and hopefully we can get a little bit ahead of it. And uh, 
so so I would recommend if we're going to do this that we we try to um, to pick some issues you know uh, tomorrow um, for for our first week. So John Mason, do you want to like maybe just follow a practice of pinging us in the planning issue? Uh, you know maybe you could ping the whole group or you could just ping Martin and I and and we can figure it out whenever you have added more items to one of these uh, estimation sections. Do you, do you want to just do it that way or did you have another way in mind? Oh, okay. So I was assuming that you guys would want to make the decision about which ones you thought we would have estimated by next week rather than me. If you want me to just do a best guess, I can do it that way too. I mean, I'm thinking we should go in your priority order. Yeah, well, this is the, the priority order is here, but some of these might might seem, oh, this is so big. I may not feel like I'm able to estimate it in one week uh, or maybe not. I mean, the, the approach, the idea is to try to do it with less information. So if, um, if we're comfortable with that, we could just, you know, go in order. Yeah, I think just to make sure we don't end up with anything like hanging out at the end for some reason that you would like to have estimated earlier on, I, I think it makes sense to have you tell us what order you'd like to approach things personally. Okay, great. Well, um, the order is, is, is up there. I can start moving things into, uh, into this next week. How, what is the right number? What do you mean by number? How many items would you like me to move from the top section into the next, uh, for the next week? Uh, well, it, uh, there's 13 in total, so one, two, three, four. So it seems like three per week. And we three in the back end, but I don't know, like, so is estimation back end and front end? So a quarter of the yeah, list each week. I was thinking the same thing, Magda. Okay, so great. So that would mean that like one one issue per person per back end and then front end has one and a half. Or one as well. I, I guess that depends on the issue, right? Like some of the issues might need further breakdown into front end and back end. Some probably are just front end or back end. I guess that that depends. But yeah, um, let's just do like three per week for mm -hmm. now. I guess that's a good idea. So Martin, you just reminded me of something else here. If, uh, if we assign an engineer on one of these things, it may not have been split into implementation issues yet. Um, I'm wondering, would we want the initial assignee to come in for the rough estimate and go ahead and break it out and estimate each of those? Or do we just want to do like an extremely rough high level estimate on, on the parent issue? That's a good question. I, I, my, my gut feeling tells me giving a rough, rough estimate on something that um, requires both back end and front end. Sometimes it's really hard for a front end engineer to give a, even a rough estimate on the back end because we don't really know what the implication is or um, if it's going to be like a performance heavy thing or um, so I'd rather have it the parent issue being split up into separate issues and then have the dedicated engineer um, only um, estimate the relevant portion. Extending what uh, Magdalena said a little bit earlier, uh, I think it would make sense to just uh, like, again, uh, assign somebody and then if they feel like they need um, somebody else's uh, second opinion, they can uh, co-assign them and then do an estimate together or like uh, split it up into two tickets if, if they feel like that's necessary, but just uh, to make it as easy as possible, uh, maybe just assigning one person and then uh, <clears throat> just pull in the people that's necessary from there and let that person be the driver essentially. I think the co-assignment's a great idea. 
Um, and actually, I, I think this probably falls on engineering manager's shoulders uh, when, you know, when we try to assign, you know, anything that isn't self-assigned by somebody will come in, make sure it gets an assignee, um, and probably at that time, try to split it out into the implementation issues and, yeah, okay. Either way, I can see it work. Yeah, I'm sure we'll we'll have some stumbles as we make adjustments, and uh, but uh, we can keep reviewing it and course correct. It seems like we have a lot to go through still, and we only have five minutes left. Three minutes. Uh, should we move on? All right, let's see who's next here. So I think uh, we're, we're down to Nick items from Nick. Nick. Um, um, there's I, I haven't, no I haven't left you much time. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, there's no point in, in, uh, in, in really presenting all that much stuff. However, I will point you towards the, um, the message I left in our G Manage Analytics Slack channel. And if you can provide feedback on, on the little post that I put in, in our Slack channel, I think that should suffice. Uh, it's a little prototype, so let me know, uh, let me know what you think of it and uh, click on the issues that I posted there and they're pretty self-explanatory and, and take a look. Um, but that's it, I'll pass it over to Martin. Yeah, I only have a... It's more like an FYI, um, just sharing what the uh, managed input group has implemented. So they they launched the first experiment. Uh, I linked the the guidelines in our agenda doc, and um, that's probably something that we should keep an eye on in in the future if we if we ever want to implement some sort of AP AB testing for uh, some of our analytics features, since we talked about this recently multiple multiple times. So check out the experiment guide if you're interested in it. And then whenever we uh, have something that we want to A-B test, let's uh, consider implementing it as an experiment. I think that's it. Cool. Well, thanks everybody for the great discussion, uh, especially on that process issue. Uh, that'll be uh, that'll be a fun experiment for us to try to make planning a little bit simpler for everybody. So, uh, thanks all for joining, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. <laughs>